start recording thanks for being here both of you maj and alok uh, it's such a pleasure to be here today having another discussion on centering the sdgs uh, in education and getting a lot of youth voices so we will have alok bhatt our eco ambassador in melbourne new jersey speaking with our expert maj joseph sardo uh, he is uh, from the philippines and has been uh really spearheading uh, teacher training on digital literacy with the government he works with the government there and is currently actually we are doing this on a weekend because he is so busy training teachers on such an important skill so thank you much for being present and available uh, over the weekend and thanks alok for doing this over the weekend as well uh just a quick uh, uh, introduction about maj as i mentioned he works with the government and he has been uh promoting sdg 4 quality education uh, especially 4.4.1 which is a promotion of youth and adults using uh with information using ict skills so it would be great to hear from marge on his reflections on using ict skills for improving quality of education thanks for joining and i'll uh share now i'll ask alok to uh, ask his, his questions thank you dr anger So my first question is does the Leeds Leeds project also include elements of global citizenship and education for sustainable development essentially SDG 4.7 Oh we can hear you much you're muted and thank you so much can you hear before i answer the question um i would like to present and to um explain what project is all about so is it, if it's okay to present my slide uh, please allow me. great and we can thank you so much okay so is my slide visible right now no we can't see the slide okay for a while is it yes visible yes thank you so much. yes okay so uh, again i'm marge to sebsardo i am a google certified trainer and innovator so about the project um project leads stands for learner and empowerment through applied digital skills known or also known as leads so it is an anchored in the sdg number 4 quality education um it's a response to the asean challenge so um when they gathered and um have a meet a conference last 2020 so they they released a challenge specifically this one so they challenged us to strengthen the ability of educational systems to nurture and empower each and every child um adolescent and especially young person including the most disadvantaged with digital literacy and transferable skill so this um this reason um led me to build a project which is anchored to the challenge so the challenge uh, under the project is a free online training series so it's usually 10 sessions facilitated by mostly um experts or google for education innovators trainers including coaches so using the google apply digital skills curriculum so it's all, um already available in the internet in the google um site so this is this will help us develop our uh, learners with digital literacy skills okay so yeah So the objectives of the project leads is to train um learners with GADS curriculum, so the the curriculum I mentioned earlier, to develop um especially their applied digital skills because this is really a need. So um, and of course to deliver opportunities to collaborate yeah with local and international youth networks and of course, um provide certifications as proof of the learner mas mastery on applied digital skills. So I will not explain this one, but our um the project also is anchored to develop the students' twenty first century skills. So this is really important, especially if you are living in this era, in this information age era. 
So this one is an introduction to the uh, first pilot school that I um I integrated the project with. So um this school was um uh, sent me an information or a data showing that the digital literacy skills of the students are lower than expected. So that's why it's really a very good target. <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's really a very good target uh, since we are developing digital literacy skills. So they provided the data, which I wasn't able to include in the presentation. But it's really a good, a good to see that the students have average knowledge when it comes to data literacy. So yeah, those are the, the project um, guides, the project um the basic information about the project. So these are some of the examples of the activities and including the required outputs that the students are um, will undergo. Okay, so we have their um, applications such as Google Docs, wherein they will create their resume. So we all know that resumes are really essential, especially when you are going to apply a job. And then some examples are Google Drive lessons, for school, so the output is an organized Google Drive link. And um, to sum it up, all of the activities will help them um, practice their digital literacy skills. And then using the output, we can evaluate those outputs and make sure that they are um, really, um, un they really understand what digital literacy skills is all about. Okay, so that is the overview of the project. And we have our first launching um, last Monday. So yeah, and to answer that question, um, I'm really sorry, um, can you please um, repeat again the question? So. Sure. Um, how does the LEADS project also include elements of global citizenship and education for sustainable development? Essentially SDG 4.7. Thank you so much. Um, the project leads, um, as you can see, it has a lot of activities. Um, say, for example, we have integrations from other projects. Um, in the Google Applied Digital Skills curriculum, we have different um, topics such as um, the Internet Awesome, um, digital skills, literacies, um, topics about gender sensitivity. All of those are integrated in topics such as, say for example, if they're going to create a PowerPoint presentation, there are examples wherein values, um, skills, and other related um, GCED um, topics are integrated. Okay. So you're including like gender equity in, and also in, in terms of yes. and also in peer work? Um, and we can um, easily integrate this because um, like what I said, we have we can connect or we can um, have an international or a local um, collaboration wherein we can invite, invite speakers ab advocating those um, topics that, which we can also integrate to the uh, applied digital skills that we are requiring for the students to, do, to accomplish. So like what I said, um, in the PowerPoint presentation, we can use that as a campaign um, medium Say, for example, if we're going to campaign gender sensitivity and um, I ask them to create posters using um, Google Docs or using Google Drawings, so they will easily do that and we can integrate, apply digital, digital skills at the same time, um, um, show awareness of the, the topics inside the GCED curriculum. Right, that's very interesting. Thank you. Um, so for my next question... What are some challenges, what have some challenges been regarding technology reaching the students, especially during COVID? Um, the ch some of the challenges that we had, especially um, like what I uh, read from your previous questions, um, not all of the students have access to technology and it's really a problem that we need to address. That's why we are collaborating with organizations. Say for example, the Department of Information and Communications Technology. Uh, we're in the, they have a project known as Free Wi-Fi for All. So they have um, stations wherein there is an available, um, say for example, a computer um, networks 
um, that students can easily use. So there are also projects from the Department of Education where we provide, um, say for example, technical assistance and technolog technological packages, which um, every school can utilize. So um, this is more of a collaborate, collaborative project and we maximize those resources for us to, of course, um, come up with the goal and produce. And, and of course, to, to, um, to easily target those goals that we are um, implementing. That's a very innovative solution to, to the problem because I know other countries are also dealing with the same issue, like lack of internet access, which has really hampered their education systems during the pandemic. Yeah, um, actually, we, we also don't have the kind of access, but um, um, not all um, schools have access to technology. So some of them are really untapped. Some of the um, students are really a part of those underserved individuals. That's why um, we wanted to, um, this project to become low, globally recognized so that we can easily find solutions and collaborate with other um, innovators, ambassadors, and advocates. So um, to us or to, to um, ask advices on how we can, um, we can um, make this as big as possible so that many students, those underserved, those indigenous people um, will have the ability to um, develop their applied digital skills, even without having that, that much resources. Makes sense. Um, so my next question is, can you elaborate a bit more on the information and communication technology, ICT skills, and what do these skills look like? Yeah, um, some of the skills that I mentioned are mostly transferable skills. So that's one of the most um, important skills uh, one of the most important skills that all of the students must learn because those tran transferable skills are really essential for us or for them to be um, future um, productive citizens of the country. So some of the examples are um, mainly from applied digital skills are the communication skills, um, critical thinking skills, the four Cs that I mentioned earlier, that I showed earlier. So some of those are the skills and it's part of the information and communications technology skills. Right. So applied digital skills can empower students through individualized education. However, do you think it will create gaps in learning because there are many countries and regions where these students don't have access to the technology? Yeah, um, it's the same answer that I mentioned earlier. We are communicating with other government organizations, especially youth organizations available in the Philippines, where they can extend their hands to say, for example, to mention or to um, recognize underserved individuals that we can teach. So yeah, that's part Makes of that. Sense. So then can you share some success stories of your students who are a part of this project? Um, actually, the project just launched uh, this month. So I might say that um, I can't show you any success story, but I, I, I assure that uh, despite of the challenges that we encountered from the orientation that we had, so I have at least 35 participants um, from um, a, a, a part here in the Philippines. And um, even though I, I, I gathered the data and I, I realized that they I mostly use um, mobile phones, which is really a challenge if you're going to take this project because this is more of a um, Google, uh, Google applications. So say, for example, you can't really um, edit a document inside the phone that easily. So um, they have really a lot of challenges and a lot of barriers, but those students, so out of 35 students, I have um, at least 75% of the students on board 
So that's the initial um, success story of this project. And of course, this project was recognized by the regional um, director of the, the, the location of the school that we are targeting. So yeah, they are really supportive when, they, um, when I introduced the project. And they really gave a specific time for the students to learn from the project. So since um, there are regular school schedules, they allotted a specific time for us to have a very wonderful session. So all I can say is that many of the organizations are helping us make this project possible and successful. I, I wish you the best. And for my final question, Digital world and digital education are an integral part of our modern world. While it has many advantages, there are also disadvantages in terms of cyber threats like hacking, bullying, identity theft, human trafficking, technology addiction, and privacy invasion. How can students avoid these threats? Um, the project, as you can see, has a lot of potential when it comes to uh, cybersecurity awareness. So as what I said, we are um, collaborated with the Department of Information and Communications Technology, and they are really experts when it comes to advocating cybersecurity and other um, related um, threats. So um, aside from that, Google Applied Skills has micro courses that we can use. So for example, Be Internet Awesome is a cybersecurity awareness campaign. So it's a mini course where students will learn how to use um, every Google applications tool to uh, application tools in a positive and in a responsible way. So um, the, the curriculum is really flexible since it's really um, can be adopted um, for younger um, individuals. Um, it can also be introduced for preschool students. That, that is really essential because we can, we need to um, provide awareness as early as possible. So that's why we are targeting youth uh, from the preschool up to the um, age 25 to 40. So all of those individuals who will, um, who are potential or who are really targets of cybersecurity and cyberbullying cases um, have the ability or have the, the opportunity to, you know, be aware of the possible threats and the possible solutions that they can do or the possible actions that they need to um, take a step on. Makes make sense. Thank you, Alok. I think wonderful questions from your end, Alok, and very pertinent as well. And imagine, uh, given what you are doing, I think this is really the need of the hour. I really liked all the applied aspects of your training, including resume building, rather than getting into the hardware of the computers. And of course, that is important. But for people like me who would want to get functional literacy in ICT skills or digital skills, I think what you are doing is... Uh, very, very pertinent and uh, useful for the students, I'm sure. And I hope that the teachers, it's so wonderful to hear that the teachers are also giving special time and you are able to integrate this into the uh, you know, curriculum during the day. So all wonderful experiences. Thanks for sharing this. And given the pandemic situation, it is very clear that we need to have much more of this digital skills um, students are relying on it much more than uh, previous years and in the next years to come they will definitely do uh, you know many more uh, things using digital uh, digital work so continue to um, work with your teachers continue to inspire us continue to uh, you know work on this digital skills and hopefully we will get in touch with you next year to see what your progress has been you said that the project has just started and we want to hear from your stories and hear from the teachers also so next year maybe we can invite your teachers to see how they've benefited from this entire experience and I really appreciate you taking the time I know you are busy with your teacher trainings right now as we speak and uh, you devoted your uh, weekend for us. So thanks for being present. And we will share this video across uh, to our network so that they can get to see uh, the work that you're doing on uh, digital literacy and maybe 
share your email uh, as well i have your email uh, maybe people and other teachers might want to go and get in touch with you uh, to see how they can integrate all of what you are doing uh, with their work uh, as well so i uh, thank you alok and thank you thank much you. for for uh, this presentation thank you so much thank you so much it was great talking to you thank you thank you